What's up and welcome to the videos. It feels like it's been a while, but today I managed to film a day in the life of myself as a trader, documented the entry, the management of the trade, and then the afterthought process of why I took the trade from a high time frame to lower time frame narrative, and just some thoughts along the way as well. So it's been really good. Overall, it's been really focused around my trading aspect of my life. I do have different aspects of my life as well. I am focused on obviously trading being the number one thing, but then after London session in New York's over, I then tend to focus on other things as well. So I've obviously got my YouTube, which has been pretty much inactive for a while to allow me to focus on other things. Um, but then I've also got a lot of you have been asking about the Discord, which has been inactive and closed down for some time. I have been working on things behind the scenes. There is something coming very shortly and it's gonna allow everyone to come in for free and connect with other like-minded traders and actually support people on the same mission. It's gonna be a really special place. So I'm really excited for that, but more to come on that shortly. But overall, yeah, it's been a great day. Busy, focused on trading, and now I've not finished. It's quarter past eight, and I'm just gonna round up with some testing because I'm currently looking at potentially adding in a third pair, which is gonna be dollar Swiss. So I just need to get another round of testing just to make sure the data's there. Um, to back that up, but all seems good. Just need to get that done. So I'm gonna crack on with that, but enjoy the video and let me know what you think down below. If I'm completely wrong, I'll take note and I'll be like, well, is there anything I can actually learn from that? Um, but if it's, if it's, let's say, just a loss and the trade lines are perfect to the plan, I'm like, I've just accepted over time that I just, just move on. Welcome to this fine Tuesday morning. So I'm currently in EU short. I partialed at three to one. I've got my stop trailed at 1% in case price actually pulls back, pay myself. But then the target is the Monday's low at 6.6. .6. So see how this develops. It is currently running about 2.7. I always partial at three to one anyway, but it kind of coincided with that area. And now I'm just literally monitoring it. There is a chance that this pulls, pulls back, but if it does, I've still paid myself. And then if it runs target, obviously it's absolutely perfect. Right, so the trade has developed a little bit more. Price has continued to move to the downside. We're getting closer and closer to target, but I've still got my stop trailed above the previous high. So, you know, worst case scenario, price pulls back, takes me out. Best case scenario, price obviously hits TP. So we'll see what happens. Right, I'm currently underway back testing dollar Swiss. I said at the beginning of the video that I am testing dollar Swiss as a potential to add in for another pair, but I need to, of course, continue to collect that data. So it's looking good so far, but I just need to continue with it. And I'm also forward testing it as well as we speak. So currently back testing on Forest Tester 5. I've been using this for a while and still use this to this day. And what metrics have we got so far? So from Dollar Swiss so far, this is January and summer February. We have a total of eight trades. Profit trades, we have five. Losses, I've taken three. Not bad so far. And then we have trades per month, averaging, obviously five. It's not too much data to, to really conclude just yet, but it's a good sign that I'm getting that frequency of trades per month. Anything between, I'd say three and eight trades on one pair per month is is optimal for myself and that's uh, absolutely solid what else have we got here so we've got profit factor we've got a decent profit factor here and then we've got return 11.9 so far so once again showing really good signs for basically a month and a half worth of data so far and overall it's looking really good i'm actually in a trade right now which is a short position on dollar swiss playing the narrative of lower prices based on the fact that price is still in a bearish trend so just continuing with that narrative if we drop down to the 15 minute time frame you can tell i've just executed a sell based on this area here and i'm just going to play this out currently so let's play this out a little bit all right so we've got push down 
I am going to move my stop now and trail my position just above that high. So this is something that I do once I'm in trades. Once I'm in trades and we have that reaction away from the entry, I will tend to trail my stop just to remove or reduce as much risk as possible. And this is something that I've done for, for a good amount of time. Next, I'm kind of keen to see how this area reacts. This is just a lower time frame area. Right, okay, I will be moving my stop to break even now just to cover risk and com comms as well. Right, boom, smash through this area. That's perfect. TP hit. And now that is brought up to nine trades for a total of 15.69R. So overall, really good profit factor increasing as well. And yeah, overall, good signs on Dollar Swiss so far. I uh, I do really like the way it moves. It moves different, completely different to Euro Dollar and Pound Yen. But once again, just adjusted to, to pair characteristics is something that I have experience in anyway. So it's just going to take a little bit of time just to kind of see its behavior, see how it moves different, and then just adapt if necessary as well. But overall, it's looking, looking really good. Like I said, I really enjoyed this actually backtesting on this platform as well. It's really simple, really easy to use. And uh, it's just really good. If you want to check it out, by the way, I partnered up with them. So if you do want to get a discount, you can just use the code down in the description below and you will have that accessible to you. So overall, I'm going to continue testing and I'll catch you all very soon. I'm at the trade for 3.6. I'm going to do a breakdown for you and explain why I took it and the actual thought process with the management as well. Let's take a look at your dollar and let's break this down from top to bottom, starting with the higher time frames. So from a weekly perspective, what can we see? So where has price actually come from to start with? So we had the breach of the 1.0 big psychological level, clear manipulation at that level, followed by higher prices. We had shift in market structure showing bullish territory. And now we're currently situated within this weekly slash daily OB to the left. And this is significant because it caused the breakup structure. So very clear intent that was delivered here. Price, once again, situated within this weekly slash daily inflection point, which was really nice. Now, moving down to the daily, things get a little bit more clearer as well. So what can we see? So price is currently contained within this bullish pro trend. And what we did see is price beginning to slow down. So we saw price beginning to show signs of slowing down here. Monday's candle was increasingly obvious that bearish territory was potentially coming into, coming into play, especially for the short term. So ended Monday with that high test candle to start the week, which is really nice and set the intention for Tuesday. Four hour chart, what can we see? So four hour chart, we had this previous sideways range, but then we broke out to the upside. The trend was obviously bullish anyway price continuing to make higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. We had this higher high form, which was coming into, when was this? Yeah, coming into Monday's London Open. And then following on from that, we obviously had this range being developed. And then we had this very clear aggression to the downside, causing a shift in market structure. So what price was essentially doing here is following a new higher high, we had a breakdown in structure and I was looking for potentially the pullback side of the move because we've had that clear run of price formed a new higher high, potentially just looking now for the pullback back into discount pricing for then switch the narrative for potential longs. So we had very clear aggression, corrective move back up into premium pricing. So very nice expensive pricing to be selling at. And as we start to build the picture down even more, 15 minute perspective, we have these equal lows in here, very nice target for liquidity. And the fact that price here, as this entry started to develop and the trade actually started to develop as well, this low failed to take out the previous high. Therefore, this becomes weak, essentially. Now, from a 15 minute perspective, we obviously pull back into the inflection point. We start to break down from a 15 minute and lower time frame perspective. And then that's where the entry actually took place. So we can see it a little bit on the five minute as well. So from a five minute perspective, liquidity was taken, swept, price began to develop. We had the breakdown in market structure and then price came back to mitigate, which was the 
entry. So stops clearly above, as you can see. Now I know a lot of people have a lot more tighter stops, but for me personally, I like to have slightly higher stops if it's seven, eight, 10 pips, whatever it, whatever it is, as long as it's above the high in a sell scenario. And I'm much rather just target less RR, but have a safe stop because I know that's much more scalable than being too greedy, trying to catch the one trade that's gonna bank you 20 R. I'd much rather consistently get three, four, five, six above that bonus R's consistently and just slowly build the account over time versus have a much lower strike rate and just be whipsawed out of a lot of trades. Just, just my approach. But yeah, tagged into the trade. It didn't take long for price to move. So price mitigated, tagged into the trade and price took out uh, Asia lows within the space of, I think it was eight, eight, nine minutes. So it was very quick, very aggressive as well. I'd already taken a partial at this point. So my partial point was three to one R. So automatically taking a partial here, which was solid. But then following that, my next target was the swing low, depending on how price actually developed. So stops were at break even at this point. I was just letting price develop. And then this started to take place. So really nice breakdown. So pullback, breakdown in structure. This is where I then started to trail my stop a little bit. And as price started to develop a little bit more, it was here. So at this point in time, this is really interesting because we have to look at it from a logical standpoint. And this is what I have within my plan as well. Ideally, target, swing low, perfect. You know, 6.6%, really nice trade. However, there's also a few, you have to understand the nitty gritty details of how price is actually reacting and the possibilities with that as well. Price is running at 5.7, right? I previously had locked in 1.2. Now I could have just left that there, let price run. However, we're early into the year, right? I don't want price to pull all the way back and take me out for 1% when price is running at 5.7. I'd much rather be slightly more aggressive with management, bank the profits and pay myself. And I'd much rather do that consistently versus letting price pull all the way back. And don't don't get me wrong, there was a very much a likelihood of this low being taken out and I understood that and I was playing that narrative. However, I do not know how far price is gonna pull back, right? This could pull all the way back, tag me out and then push lower and obviously see that intention of the swing low being taken out. I don't know that, especially coming into the back end of London, coming into New York uh, overlap as well. So what I did is I locked in profit above this previous high, price began to break down, but then failed to take out the previous low, which meant that this high became weak and then I was taken out. So really nice 3.6% trade. Price later then developed a lot more. So we did get the pullback and it was obviously deeper, which I anticipated. And then we would have hit target. So really nice trade. Obviously didn't bank the 6.6, .6, it ended up being 3.6, but really nice position, happy with the risk management and the protection of capital and um, rinse and repeat. Until I can actually move, remove the risk, I tend to just watch them. I think it's just always something I've kind of done, but because I'm waiting to see what happens after the entry. So I'm not just like walking away and leaving it. I'll see, right, do we get an actual mitigation? I.e. we actually move away and get a BOS. Or do we get a reaction to create liquidity for, let's say, price to go in the opposite direction? So I'm kind of like monitoring price. You could have had some external stress. You could be distracted because something else could be going on in life. Like we all get that as traders anyway. I know I do. To just put all your performance record essentially on one day, on one trading day, it's a bit amateurish, I think. Right, so that is a roundup of the day. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you on the next one.